Hello there. Yes, that's right. It's just me for now. You're welcome. Now, you might be wondering what's up with this week's episode. Well, we've had a lot going on recently. I deleted a ton of essential stuff off of my computer and am desperately trying to get it back. Patrick has moved out west to Saskatchewan and he's getting sorted out still. And we're still trying to figure out how we're going to do the show remotely. Malcolm got attacked by a woodland creature. And Mark's in the hospital. Don't worry, he's fine. So we haven't been able to actually record an episode for this week. So instead, I dug deep into the wildly adequate vault and I present to you what you're about to hear today. For this week's episode, you get to listen to the original demo that Mark, Patrick, and myself, even before Malcolm was here, recorded of the show. Now it's probably gonna sound terrible, there's no video, uh, and you know, we didn't really know what the hell we were doing, but this was sort of our proof of concept Uh, that we decided to do before we really got started with the show. We have, I think, two other of these demo episodes just sitting around on my hard drive. So if you like this one, maybe we'll put the other two up someday. Uh, But I'd like to save them as sort of my break glass in case of emergency episodes like I'm doing this week since we don't have a regular episode. But anyways, give it a listen. I hope you enjoy. We recorded it like in February of 2023. So it's... uh, been a hot minute since even I've given this a listen, uh, but I hope you enjoy it, uh, and hopefully by next week we'll be back with your regularly scheduled programming. Honestly, I don't want to go first, so you got to go first. I'm going to go second. Okay, I'll start. I don't have so to. So my third then? Well, there's only three of us, so I think so. That works. That's right. But the question is cold open. Okay. Do we do, we do it? Uh, I'm kind Are of indifferent. Are we currently doing it? Listen, I don't know if you understood what I was saying. I think before. we're doing it. <laughs> I don't know if you understood what I was saying before, but next time we do this, mm-hmm. we should be recording from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then it just picks up everything. Mm-hmm. So we can get a mid-conversation exactly. cold open, you're saying. It's really exactly. boring and no one cares about it. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Like, that's probably use for it. No, that was a tape. Oh, oh, I was going to say, dude, that's our <laughs> song by right there. There you go. That's where we cut it. <laughs> this this table. Hello and welcome to the demo pilot sure. episode of the Wildly Adequate Podcast. This will probably never see the light of day unless in like 10 years from now. We're really famous, and this is a huge podcast, and we say, hey, mm. pay $1,000 on our Patreon. Wouldn't that be great? And we'll give you this unheard episode from way back like when. 1000 a month? Yeah. Is that 1000 each? I think it's 1000 a is month. Is that a pay-per-view? You know that pay-per-view. would be a good idea if we did a pay-per-view <laughs> of, like, we're going to live stream the very first episode. Pa- paper listen. We're going <laughs> to pay-per-view the, li- the very first episode we ever did. You have to give us a thousand dollars for it. Like for, the, for what we're doing right now? Yeah. Holy shit. That. That'd be a lot of money. But that's, again, that's if we're really famous. Anyways, I am one-third of your host and crew, Matthew. I am joined today by two fellow idiots. I'll go ahead. My name is Mark. And, and I'm Patrick. And this is your show. Do you want to sort of give them a rundown of what it's going to be like yes so for every episode at least we've got planned for now who knows again maybe in 10 years we change when we're rich and famous or we're dead or dead probably patrick's dead the diabetes will get him the idea behind the show is the most original thing you've ever heard where three of us are each going to pick a topic ranging from you know it could be as silly as cartoons we enjoy to as serious as you know what do we think death is like you know any topic we want to choose and we'll just we'll get into them for your amusement mm-hmm. or torture, mm-hmm. depending on that's right what you're into. So apparently, I'm starting today. You are, and I said I, I actually asked for it because I was kind of nervous and I don't want you to go first. <laughs> Loves asking for it. I, I would like to begin by asking you fellas about your favorite albums, your favorite mm. music albums I'm act like i'm surprised like i didn't hear it beforehand when you told me before that we started <laughs> well we prepped before yeah. and you're gonna go first i'm gonna go first yeah I'm sure i'll go first yeah. a couple albums come to mind to be honest i mean i'm not the biggest album guy i think um, most of the time i listen to like you know the most popular songs of my favorite bands kind of a casual music listener 
But when Maddie brought it up beforehand, I was like, hmm, I think I could bring up a couple. So first, I think about Ugly is Beautiful from Oliver Tree. He's kind of, nowadays, in 2023, he's kind of like... The year of our Lord. Yeah, the, the year of our Lord, that's right. He's kind of releasing music that's just kind of super popular, but also people shit on it. And with his newer album, it was kind of like very poppy. But I enjoy his Ugly is Beautiful album from 2020, but I had some really good songs on it. So that one is, is on my list for sure. And then I also am a big Weekend fan, so Don FM and After Hours are my favorite Weekend albums. They're probably the only albums where I have every single song liked and saved on my Spotify. Like most of the time, you know, you listen to an album, you'll maybe like a few songs, maybe half, or even 70% if it's a really good album that you like. But for me, it was like every single one. Not one track was one that I was like, nah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So those those were mine that came to mind. Uh, Fair enough. Pretty, yeah. pretty basic boy I am. Yeah, for me, I'm like like you said, I'm not the biggest like album person. Like I usually just listen to like my favorite songs from the album. I know like for example Matthew. This is kind of rare to me at least. He likes every song on Dark Side of the Moon. If, mm. if I'm not yes wrong about that. Big Pink yeah, Floyd so guy. He's a big Pink Floyd guy. Yeah, <laughs> but if I were to like pick an album where. I like a high proportion of the songs. Mm. And you're going to make fun of me for <laughs> the artist I'm about to say. Can I guess? You can go Is it Shawn Mendes? No. Is it Justin Bieber? It is. Justin the, Bieber. His Justice album. I, I liked a lot of the songs on that one. No, so. When did that one come out? Is it like an old one when he was no, a No, no, that one, that one is, is his most recent album. Oh, I see. Yeah, his okay. most recent album. It's pretty good. Um, so that's okay. sort of my... Um, one of the ones that I like from... But like I, the thing is, is, there's a lot of songs... Um, I guess from other albums that are older that I that I do like a lot, but n- none that have the same like proportion of how many songs I like than than that one. How, what percentage or how many of them I would, would say, you say you like? I would say like eighty percent of the songs. Wow. Okay. Is, yeah. Yeah. That's that's mine. Yeah. Well, speaking of basic bitch answers, that's a basic bitch answer. No, I'm just I'm, saying, I'm admitting mine was Mark basic. Mark kind of said yeah. basic bitch answers, as was alluded to. Yeah. Yes, in terms of favorite albums ever i mean dark side of the moon is up there for me i mean that's just 43 minutes banger that's just 43 minutes of i think it's 43 have, minutes have you ever watched um what's that movie called the the paul blart mall cop you're not, no. you're, you're not giving enough information no no the the any um any, are you okay the dorothy, you know, the, dorothy. dorothy. the wizard, wizard of oz, oz. Have you ever oh watched have you ever with watched dark side of the moon exactly while well high no okay sober I've listened to Dark Side of the Moon a little stoned one time, um, but not while also okay. watching The Wizard of Oz. But I didn't really get to enjoy it stoned because that was my first oh. time ever getting stoned. Oh. And I got like two songs into the album before I started throwing up for two hours. That's right. That's right. So that wasn't... You uh... Do you think it's a hoax? Do you think that the idea that it lines up perfectly is just kind of bullshit? Or do you think people actually have... Uh, I, think it, I think it lines up from what I've heard. I think what's bullshit, and I mean like... Some of the Pink Floyd guys, like Roger Waters, have mentioned this. Where like they'll get because people have asked them and been like, "Oh, was it intentional that you guys made it line up with Wizard of Oz?" And they're like, "No, of course not. Yeah. It just kind of like is a coincidence, I guess, it's that insane. it sort of it's not does." Yeah. Well, but the other thing I don't get when people say it lines up is, "What do you mean?" Because the album's like forty minutes and change, and the movie's like. I forget how long oh. The Wizard of Oz is, but it's got to be at least an hour or so. So I don't understand what people are talking about, unless it's like one of those things where it's like, oh, if you start it 12 minutes into The Wizard of Oz, it's probably one of those like ones. then it's a perfect match of like where they're at in the movie and like what where I, the songs are kind of thing. What I guessed was that like it's like whatever happens when there's certain part, parts of the movie that like, you know, it's like the fucking intense part of the movie. I've never even seen the movie, so I have no idea. You've what never on. seen The Wizard of Oz. I've never oh seen my the goodness! Of Oz. So but there's something that. about something about flying monkeys or whatever. I'm sure, like, something I'm sure when something happens, it's like weird. Then like the the weirder part of the, I don't know, you know. Yeah, that would be my assumption. But yeah, I don't know. But um, is, does that mean we have to light some green up and give it a whirl? Some green. <laughs> what are you fucking? Green? <laughs> I think I think that's legal in this country. Um, it is legal. We're, we're in Canada. We're, which country are we? Are we in? We're in sweet the Great White North. The Great White North. Mm. That's right. We're in we're in we're in Canada. So is this good luck sweet, finding us, idiot. Is this Sweden where they believe in dwarves or? I think that's elves. Iceland. Elves is Iceland. Elves. Iceland, Iceland, Iceland they believe in elves, which okay. is yeah. hilarious. Yeah, that's yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't want to say sh- the short kind, right? Like not like the like Lord the pointy, of the pointy elves kind. I mean, not... yeah, like Santa's workshop style, not really? like yeah, like tiny little like 
Like the three foot tall pointy ear. Not like yeah. That's what they believe in? Yeah, not like Lord of the Rings where it's like I thought you, you know I thought you were gonna I thought you guys were talking about like pointy ear like fairy tale elves or like Yeah, like, like that kind of thing. No, but no, but you're talking about like short Santa elves. I'm talking about like fucking Lord of the Rings like he has a bow and arrow. No, 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 no. That's a Patrick the short saying, one. where it's okay, like cool. not not it's not Lord of the Rings where they're like these gorgeous like you why know. Would they, yeah, why would they not pick the cool ones? Why yeah, they, they didn't pick the cool ones. Because I feel like it's so much easier to debunk their existence. Like if they're small, then it's like easier to like <laughs> they, be like they oh, hide. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They're so hard to spot. They're so hard to spot as opposed to like you have to look down a little bit. Some six foot gorgeous woman or man who's got pointy ears. Pale skin. Yeah. Yeah, this is fucking, an unbelievable warrior. This real life who would kill you on sight. This real life link. But uh, what the we're we talking about? Uh, oh, Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah, I just think. I mean, that's just perfect all the way through. It's surprising to me that you guys. I feel like the best albums are the ones that you like every song on from start to finish. You know, I think there's albums like, that you can like, yeah, and yeah. maybe not necessarily like every single song. But to me, it's like when I think of my favorite ones, it's like. Dark Side of the Moon, or like, you know, Demon Days by Gorillaz, or like some of these albums where it's yeah. just like start to finish, like yeah. there's there's no song you skip on there. Like, no, that's what I'm that's what I that's what I was kind of saying with the weekend where After Hours and Dawn FM, they're very popular albums. You could say they're basic. He's a, he's a kind of a super popular artist nowadays. Mm. But I can listen to every single song, including like random interludes and like one minute like in Dawn FM there's like a one minute thing where I think it's like Quincy Jones. It's called A Tale by Quincy. And it's Quincy Jones talking about, like, describing his mom being kind of, like, having dementia pre-talks and being carried out of the house in a straight jacket. And it's, like, it's like this random story about his his childhood or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's so interesting to me, and I, and I kind of, the, I like the vibe of it. And I never skip it. And so, like, even when I'm going through the album, every song I love and every, like, little weird interlude I like as well. Yeah. That's why I, I agree where if a music, if an album has a song or has every single song, like, I like it, then I'm just gonna fucking like that's my one of my favorite albums of automatically. Yeah. Right. But I, now that I think about it, yeah. I guess that doesn't have to be true because I mentioned Demon Days by Gorillas, which is an album that's like a start to finisher for me. Whereas probably my favorite album of theirs, uh Plastic Beach, mm. there's like one or two on that album that mm. I'm like, eh, mm. I can skip over these. Mm. But I would still say that's like Interesting. An all time album for me. So I guess it's the case where are we separating between... I, I guess, yeah. yeah, where it's like your favorite albums, but I guess that means two certain different things of like, what are the favorite albums that you really like? And maybe there's a song on there that mm -hmm. you could like do without. Yeah. And what are your favorite albums that it is like a start to finish? Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, don't skip a single song. This is perfect. Listen to the whole thing. Well, what I was going to say is that like, when you're talking about favorite albums, are we, di are we separating that between like, you think that... The Plastic Beach one is that what it's called? Yeah. You think that one's a better album, but it's not like, or you think it's your it's your favorite album between those two? You'd like it better? Of all of the Gorillaz albums, Plastic Beach, yeah, I would have to maybe sit and think about it. But mm. Plastic Beach might be my favorite album, even mm. though there's like a song or two on there that mm. I don't necessarily okay. care for. I guess there's a difference too when it's like thinking of it as an album of like songs you don't care for that still work. Yeah. With the album. Yeah. Because, like, the two songs that I don't really like on Plastic Beach still fit the album, which is album. why, like, if I was going to sit and listen to the album from start to finish, like, I would. Mm. And if those two songs came up, I'd be like, you know, maybe they're not my favorite, but, like, they work within the album. Mm. Or I guess it's a different thing if there's songs that either don't work. Pull you out of it. Or you just straight up. Like, are just straight up not good songs. Because mm. I don't know, I'm trying to think. Well, like, again, with Pink Floyd, for example, I've always long made the argument that I think they've put out, like, five perfect albums in a row. Like, I think they did Metal, Dark Side of the Moon, mm. Wish You Were Here, Animals in the Wall. Like, I think that's just... Every single one of those is immaculate. But the very first one, Metal, there's one song on there that's, like... It's called Seamus, and it's about a dog. And it's, okay. like, got this very, like... Louisiana like folk tale folk yeah. country kind of like you know out here in the bayou kind of mm. like sound to it I don't like that which I don't think fits <laughs> the rest of that album and that is the one song on that one I skip because the rest of that album is sort of like because mm. they had done obviously like a handful of albums before that but like a lot of people give credit to Dark Side of the Moon being like the album where Pink Floyd hit which is mm. I think true but they'll also say like oh Dark Side of the Moon is where they sort of like found their sound or like what they were going to be sort of thing mm. whereas to me metal 
was sort of the one where that happened. And then you get Dark Side of the Moon from the fruits of that labor. But it's like Seamus does not fit that at all. Like the rest of the songs, particularly Echoes, are like, oh, this is like Pink Floyd in its infancy of sorts kind of thing. Isn't it like a 14 minute song or something? Yeah, Echoes. Echoes (laughs) is, I want to say 20 minutes or something. Mm -hmm. And if you had the vinyl back in the day, which is before our time because we're not fucking old I'm a is um, oh, it's right. a record store inside. well that's true and now shout you just, out shout out to toy rat and now you just oh, now you just gave he's gonna our, like that. and now you gave Evo? Him, Evo? Now you, that's now right if we get we big are. we're not gonna do oh, anything shit. for him you what'd you say where we are that's right. that's oh shit but well, that's okay that's it's, a, it's a demo it's a pile wait wait we're not gonna be we're not gonna be we censor it always said always said it's canada did we not no there's a record store and then you said toy rat so, you know, there's plenty of <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, Echoes on the vinyl record back in the day took up, like, you know, for the youngins out there who don't know, vinyls have, like, a, you know, shit on both sides, your A side, your B side, and Echoes is the entire B side. No way. On that record. Like, the, <laughs> first, the first, like, Hilarious. three or four <laughs> songs take up side A, and then side B is <laughs> just Echoes. I like that. Which That's is, weird. like, such All a, like, rings are just yeah, like, like, it's such a, it's... It sounds weird to say this, but it feels like a badass move. Mm. And I don't know why I'm using the term badass, but it just feels like a, hey, this is an entire side, get fucked. It's not cookie, yeah. We're not cooking cutter fucked over side. here. Yeah, it's yeah. the get fucked side. <laughs> oh, you thought there were going to be more than one song on <laughs> yeah, this side? Get fuck you. Get fucked. Fuck you, idiot. If I may interject for a moment here. Just no. I don't circle... think you should. I don't just, think you should. <laughs> just to circle back to something you said earlier as to like, um, you know, favorite albums can be defined as like, um, albums where you like a lot of the songs or like all the songs through. Right. And you can call me weird for this. Maybe I am weird for this, but I actually don't think I've ever sat down and like listened to purposefully like, okay, I'm going to listen to this album. Really? Wow. Like, I just listen to songs. You know I mean, they just come and like, I just, I don't like take in an album. That's See, interesting. that's interesting. And, and the only time I do take in an album is with like my vinyls at home. Where, right. Like, and, and even and even then, I don't just sit down like I'm doing something. Like I put it on in the background. I don't typically. I I'm, I think this might surprise Maddie as well. I, I'm kind of with you, but to me, it depends on who the artist is and yeah. if I've heard, you know, if I'm excited about an album coming up. Like Maddie, what was that out? What's the, the fucking Gorillas album that's coming out soon? Oh, we're this month about? is uh, Cracker Island. Cracker Island. Which like we're just with, listening like to with some that, of the singles. Yeah, we were listening to some of the singles. I think they're all really cool so far. And because I'm kind of building hype for it a little bit, I might listen to the whole thing like from start to finish. But I'll, oftentimes, I'll just kind of find songs from like edits, Instagram videos, social media, whatever, movies even. I'll Shazam them. Yeah. But if it's an artist I love, like when The Weeknd is going to release a new album eventually, I'm going to listen to the whole thing from start to finish. Mm-hmm. If it's someone I'm not really that, you know into or maybe i just heard a song or two i might not feel compelled to listen to the whole thing yeah unless it's getting like rave reviews and people are saying it's like a fucking Mm -hmm. masterpiece type thing honestly to build on that i don't even like like most of the music i have is from like my friends like i just hear from my friends or like they tell me to oh go listen to the song i rarely like stumble upon music on my own okay i i don't know like i don't like do you like go on spotify and just search i I, I used to do that sometimes where it would do like um I discover weekly playlist. Yeah. I haven't done it for a long time. Oh, they like they like make playlists. They curate for you to it for you. Stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they, they still do that? I think so. If you go to your oh. homepage on Spotify, there should be some sort of like recommendations playlist. Okay. Where it'll base it off of, and sometimes I think it even breaks it down by genre. Like, you know, here's oh, your that's pretty here's good. here's indie recommendations based on your indie music that you currently have saved already. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think most of my music that I find, I surprisingly find from movies, Instagram videos. YouTube, like I said, just kind of social media and and and, and like traditional media, like films and television. Mm-hmm. I just I hear shit That's that right. I like. I, I shazam it and I save it, mm-hmm. and then I'll kind of like sometimes Spotify does a really cool thing now as well, where like I have an oldies playlist, and there's like a, a button called like enhance your playlist. You click it, and then it'll like tr- double the, the size of your uh, your playlist with a bunch of other songs. Oh, okay. And then there's a little plus or minus beside all of those new suggested songs. That's right. If you listen to it and you like it, you click plus, and then it adds even more suggestions based on what you've accepted from them. That's right. I use that feature, but like I didn't know there was like a button. Like in my playlist, when I go on my oldies playlist, I scroll to the bottom, and it shows me like five or four, six. five or four exactly. Yeah, and then that's the right. plus or whatever, and you can like try. And I think add it's. Them I think that's similar to. to the enhanced thing. Yeah. But like, it kind of just like throws it in the middle of your playlist, and then and you but you can also turn the enhanced thing off, and mm-hmm. then I think if you turn it off, then it just shows those four or five underneath. Yeah. The weird thing to me about you saying you don't sit and listen to an album from start to finish is weird for me. And I guess in like a, 
I don't know, like a music discovery sense. Cause it's like, yeah, a lot of songs, if I get song, like I'm listening to music generally, I'm not listening to like an album from start to finish. Usually it's like, Oh, my rock and roll playlist and just listen to, you know, all the music on that kind of thing. But like discovering though. But in terms, yeah, in terms of discovering things, cause I don't know, it's like I have been trying in recent times to sort of broaden my horizons you have. with music because as a kid yes. I was very yes. like, He's got rap and stuff. Well, as a kid, I was very like, rock and roll, rock and roll, rock and roll. And that's still like my go-to. Yeah. But like, I try to sort of like explore different things. And every once in a while, I find stuff I like. But like, I don't know, for example, like when I, last year, like I really went down and now they've become like one of my probably top five bands ever. But when I went down like the Radiohead well, because oh, yeah. all I ever heard is the same fucking song everybody hears from Radiohead of Creep. Mm. Everybody hears Creep. Or no, or no surprises with the ding, ding. Yeah, maybe. Like, they have obviously all these, yeah, these yeah. bigger hits, but I feel like most people hear Creep first. Like, that's sort of like the first Radiohead song How's everybody hears. Goes? You know, they're like, but I'm a creep. Yeah. Can you expand? Can you keep going? You keep going. No, no, I actually, I, I, I actually I seriously, for real, don't I, know. I don't, I don't want to sing it. I'll play it for you later. It's fine. Okay. Editor, put in a five-second clip of Creep here. We don't have an editor. Um, <laughs> he made that up. <laughs> um... <laughs> But when I started getting into Radiohead, it was like, okay, I list, like I go to Spotify, let's say, for example, I go to their profile and where it has like their like top 10 oh, I like that too. most played songs. I, I listen that. to like a couple of those and yeah. I hear a couple of them. Like I hear a song like Paranoid Android. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is like Banger. awesome. What is this? And then it's like, it's on the album, mm. OK Computer. So I'm like, okay. So for me with Radiohead, it was like, I listened to basically all of their albums like every single one start to finish and then basically picked all the songs mm. out of those albums and then yeah threw them in with some of my other music so again there's songs like or there's out al- again okay computer fantastic album kid a right after it fantastic in rainbows fantastic i don't necessarily listen to those albums from start to finish usually though it's more like i'm listening to a couple songs from this one a couple mm. songs from this one but i found them by going to the artist page. to the albums and I still, like, there's still albums or songs, like, my favorite, for example, Radiohead song ever is Jigsaw Falling ever. Into Place. Yes. Why is that surprising? I don't know, like, he said, like, <laughs> I never, gonna... I've never known you to like Radiohead, that's why I mean, I just, say what favorite song ever. I love their shit. I, I feel like for the last, you know, year or two, yeah. it's a little bit of inside baseball, right? <laughs> 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 but when I'm in Maddie's car, he's playing Radiohead a lot. I mean, maybe it's just... I think I just don't know their songs. Sure. Well, that's also part of it, too. But so what I'm saying is, so Jigsaw Falling Into Place is my favorite Radiohead song. Ever. On, Hmm. ever. Is it on on Kids Side A? No, it's on the In Rainbows album. And I listened to... He can't can't believe that you would have a favorite. That I would have a favorite. (laughs) So that's on He can't grasp it. But In Rainbows is an album that, like, when I was first going through Radiohead stuff, I listened to that entire album. And Jigsaw Falling Into Place did nothing for me. I was like, all right, it's another Radiohead song. It's really? whatever. So Didn't from, care. So from not giving a shit to being your favorite. Exactly. But then the thing is, too, is I also feel like I go over albums mm. over and over again. Where, like, I listen to In Rainbows over and over again. And then over time, it was like... You give it a chance, Oh, right? Body Snatchers is really good. Mm. Oh, this other one on here is really good. Holy shit, Jigsaw Falling Into Place is a masterpiece of a song. So I feel like that's the thing... Too. And then in terms of music that's like not in my wheelhouse trying to get into, I feel like that's why I listen to a lot of albums too. Because I'm not like, as you guys know, the biggest rap fan. But like when Kendrick, album Kendrick though, Lamar, right? the Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, which just won too long rap a, album of the year. Awesome album, by the way. the Grammys yesterday. Oh, they did. Yeah, long title though. That's what you're yeah, going to say. Yeah, I was going to say. Not, I mean, I, I feel like people don't even know the album's name. It's not the because, snappiest no. title. Like, but like, like, damn. Like, damn. But that's an album that like I listened to the first time and was like... Patrick's on his phone. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> I really like what I like the subject matter and all this stuff but a lot of these songs because when it came out everybody was like oh my god album of the year 10 out of 10 and I listened to it and I was like it's okay I think it's really interesting subject matter but there's not a song on here that does anything for me really and then over and over again listening to it now there's like five or six from that album that I've like sort of pulled out of there of like these are great well let me ask you a question what what compelled you to and I do the same thing by the way just before I ask you the question with Don FM, for example, and I'm going to keep bringing that up because I'm a weekend boy. And you're a basic boy. I'm a ba- basic, basic boy, right? As we covered. BB boy. But for Don FM, there were actually a handful of songs that I didn't care for all that much. Like maybe like, I don't even know how many songs were on the album. Maybe like 10 to 12 or something. Mm-hmm. But there was like at least three, four that I was like just kind of skipping every time. 
Maybe I just hear like the most popular ones and I'd like those. But now, and, e and even After Hours, same thing. There are certain songs like Snow Child on After Hours. I always skip that song. I don't know why. I just, maybe the first 30 seconds didn't do it for me. But then I would just give the whole album another try because I like most of the songs so much. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to keep giving it a try. And maybe that's what you were doing. Let me ask you why after. But So now Snow Child's like one of, if not my favorite song on the album, just because I kept giving it a shot. And the way it flows all together from beginning to end is, is so fucking perfect. But maybe the first 10 seconds were just kind of not my initial. Um, I wasn't it wasn't interesting to me initially. But so do you give another album like, for example, the uh, the Kendrick one? Do you give it another listen because of the buzz around it? Do you give it another listen because you like sense that, you know, there's still some things that you haven't picked up yet on? Or why do you make that decision to like re-listen to it? I think it's because especially especially if you say you don't like oh i don't it doesn't do much for me like for me my instinct would be like i'm not going to go back to it at all if it doesn't really do much for me i think it's because music for me is different in the sense of and there's a there's some like jay-z clip from some interview that or show he was is it the one where he's dancing and he looks like a woman <laughs> no no but there's some we go <laughs> there's some jay-z like clip on an interview that i really like where he's basically talking about like reviews for albums and where he talks about like how all these different places, like press or, you know, YouTube people, influencers, whoever the fuck, that interview albums, the problem with a lot of them is they'll, like, listen to an album the day it drops, and then that same day oh, put out a verdict in, like, a review on it. And his point that he makes in that is, like, how can you, like, absorb listen to, absorb, and digest an album that fast and mm -hmm. review it? Like, that should be something that comes. Drugs. Way later. Drugs. Yeah, there you go. But, and that's the thing and where, what like. That, what does that mean? Digest it, absorb it. That's how they digest it, absorb it. Oh, I see. Drugs. Flew over, flew right over my flew head. Right. I'll be honest. But I feel like that's the thing where, like, it's music is of all the art forms. I feel like music is the most different from, like, you know, movies, TV, video games, comic books, in reading, what way do you art, mean? whatever. In the sense of, like, I feel like you can watch a movie one time mm. and basically have your thoughts settled on it now maybe that changes over time yeah, but like i'm gonna disagree with certain movies i feel like that doesn't certain work certain movies but i feel like usually like i don't know i watch a movie you know i go to the theater and watch a couple years ago blade runner 2049 and i walk out of the theater just glowing Excellent like movie. this movie and i've watched that movie subsequent times over mm. love it every time like it hasn't really changed same thing with like there's video games where it's like if you play like a 80 hour open world video game and you see that through to the end and you spend 80 hours doing it then it's like you probably liked that game. And maybe, you know, if it was something a little more linear, like, you know, an Uncharted style game, for example, maybe like the first couple hours you think, ah, I don't know if this game's doing it for me, but then the game keeps going and then you get into it and your thoughts sort of like evolve. Also, it's like the, the kind of like, what, what's that term for it? Um, buyer's remorse? Is that what I'm talking about? When you buy some, when you buy a game and you just like, Trying to force yourself to play because you spent money on it. Yeah, and, sure, that happens kind of too. Like, but it's know. like I feel like your thoughts on like something longer, like a video game or a book or whatever, for example, can sort of evolve while you're going through it. Movies maybe a little less so. Like maybe a movie you watch a second time. Like for me, even I told you guys about this recently with Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yes. Excellent. When movie. like the first time we watched, it, I was like, oh, that was really good, but I wasn't necessarily like blown away by it. Yeah. And then Patrick, what did you think about it? <laughs> yeah. I don't, I like, don't want to say. He doesn't want to say. <laughs> Go ahead, he, doesn't it's fine. Get, he doesn't want to get crucified. Seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. Eleven no. Oscar nominations. Well, I think. I think. I think he. That was, that was his way of saying he doesn't get it. But well, anyway, hold but, on, hold on. Before I don't want to change the topic of conversation. While you guys have been going back and forth, I've been not paying attention. No, no, no. I've been paying attention, and I've been, uh, I guess, more deeply thinking about the question: your favorite albums, right? And I don't know how I didn't say Eric Clapton's uh, acoustic MTV. You, wow. always, you talk about that one quite often. I talk, I talk about yeah. that one quite often. That one yeah. is immaculate for me. Yeah. And, his, also, and, and his inferior version of Layla. But anyway, that's besides, that's besides <laughs> the point. Derek and the Dominoes has the better version. Everyone have, knows that. We can, have that. we can have that as a topic. Sure. That could for be sure. a whole other thing. That could be a whole other thing. But I feel like, not to cut you off, but... Yeah. What, well, we'll get back to the other thing. Or maybe we won't. Who knows? Fuck it. This is our show. <laughs> um, but I feel like that's another thing I didn't even think about is live albums. Yeah. And I feel like you two are weird about this. Why? Where I feel like you guys are less high on live albums. Like, I feel like you like, guys generally I, like the studio album. Like, just the clean. Can I tell you why? As is approach. Can I tell you why? Studio version sounds better. See, here's the thing. I think the best live albums are the ones like my dad has always put it this way where the best bands and this is more like he refers to this more in terms of like seeing a band in concert where he'll say like the best bands are the ones that you see live and it sounds like 
they just fucking hit play on the album like the studio album kind of mm-hmm. thing and i feel like that applies to live albums too like my favorite band of all time rush for example the exit stage left album they have which is just a live album so it's not like you know one with like it's not one with like songs that they made for that album it's just like a collection of stuff they played live and it still might be my favorite like thing to listen to of theirs that album is like live you know the crowd's cheering and shit but it's like just perfect to listen to whereas there are definitely albums that like i can think of that like i'll listen to them that are live albums and it's like ah this doesn't sound as like good or maybe they did this what? different or yeah. blah, blah blah like so i get what you're saying well i, I understand there's, I, sorry go, sorry. go ahead you, you yeah know. what i was gonna say was there's like that aspect of live albums where it's like it, it could be amazing like you said like the studio version is that what you said or no what like the studio version like a live album where you press play on the album and yeah like to me the best live albums yeah. usually are the ones that basically sound like like the studio, the studio album. Version. like you almost would... can't even tell yeah, but then why yeah. wouldn't you just prefer <clears throat> i understand the uh, liking the rawness of it being live but if you wanted to get as close as the studio version as possible it's like why wouldn't you just hit like listen Here's, to the perfection well, right i think away. the yeah. rawness angle is part of it but i feel like to me there's something impressive, impressive about sure. a live album where you know they're playing it right there on the spot That's especially true. again with a band like rush where their shit is so like technical and hard to do yeah. where it's like hearing them pull it off live it's like holy fuck like that wasn't a thing where you did it over and over again in the studio with yeah. all this equipment different takes like it's just right then and there plus you get the advantage of like you know hearing the crowd yeah. Like either sing along or like that. just like get cheer at the end of a song. I don't want to hear any. Like, I don't want to hear any. I don't want to hear anything out of anybody. I see where I like that music. kind of stuff, but to your thing with the Eric Clapton, the MTV one, that's yeah. a sort of different thing. Where I also exactly. feel like live albums can do cool shit, like the MTV Unplugged for that. But there's also the famous like Nirvana Unplugged yeah. album, which is really good. It's about a girl. Led I Zeppelin's know. got some like like they have one. Um, it's like a white album cover. I think it's called like BBC Sessions or something Led like Zeppelin? that. Zeppelin, which is like a live Led Zeppelin album, yeah. but it's more of like an intimate kind of show my dad again has a metallica live cd yeah. that's not like an official album like it's kind of a bootleg i guess but it's a show that was recorded of theirs but not like you know at like a arena where they usually play it it was basically recorded in like a bar yeah so it's like them playing in front of 50 people 60 people mm-hmm. instead of you know thousands and thousands like they normally do and that's such a cool album to listen to because it's such a like small intimate like it feels like you're right there in, in this bar. bar with a couple dozen other people yeah. just to bring it back to it. the to the Layla album and to compare it to what you were saying about like hitting play on an album like the the did I say the Layla album the yeah. acoustic the MTV acoustic. the acoustic MTV album um, like that one's not like you hit play and it's like perfect it's like there's in-betweens and there's like you hear him talking here mm. and there like he talks to the crowd mm. and um he does like warm-ups in between of the songs and you can hear yeah. that and it's like he does like, like cool do you, stuff do you like those imperfections they're not imperfections I, but just kind of they're like, not yeah but it's like yeah they're not i yeah, wouldn't say not, imperfections would, but i like it because it's like it makes me feel like i was there and mm. like and it was just yes. such a good set you know like you're part like, of the part of that moment yeah and he's like his vibe there like he's like playing He's just like having a good time and casual. he's laughing and he's casual. Yeah, and, it's, and that's you know the I'm thing saying? with live like, albums. I love that. Like, live yeah. albums too, yeah. I feel like do the thing where, well, A, there's an argument to be made that sometimes live versions of songs are better, like if they change things. Like, I don't have as big of an issue with this, but I know there's some people who like the Four Horsemen Metallica song was on their very first album, Kill 'em All. And it's like such a like balls to the wall song. But then like halfway through, they kind of switch to this like, they sort of just like change the pace and it sort of like kills the momentum of the song a little bit and then they get back to the other part. I like the sort of switch up, but I know some people don't. But like when they play that song live, they just totally cut that part out of the song from like the studio album and they just keep the pace of it going the mm. whole time. Like they just keep... Uh... Like talk, Speaking of, by the way, speaking of... And I, th- I think we've talked about this before, but you know that, what's that Coldplay song where... I agree with you that they kind of they switch it up and then it becomes not as good. Oh, fix you. Yeah, fix you. Oh, I love song. that song. It's, it's like a beautiful yeah. slow but the, song. Last like minute of that song where it like kind of picks up. Like I'm like no, just let me cry. Keep it sad. Like I don't need. Yeah, like I get it's it's still really well done. I don't not like it, but it's like it's weird when I just wish you like kept the pace. You ever listen to certain songs when you're sad because you want to? You actually kind of want to 
stay in that room, like that place of sadness. You want to just you want to feel you want to feel deeply. So yeah. you'll play a song that like you know gets like keeps you there or even gets you into it. And and for that song. I have to like keep looping the first little bit of it because then it goes. <laughs> well, and it's, and it's too hype and like you know rock and roll. I mean, sad songs is a whole topic unto itself. But for me, I mean, when I Maybe think of, episode. when I think of sad songs, I mean it's Crazy Frog. Crazy Frog. What? Bing bing. Now, yes. Okay. Take us away, Mark. So, what is your topic, sir? The topic that I thought of today, and I did think of it last minute, as you know. And I just want, I just want to make it known that you have Here we go. You haven't revealed the topic to us. So I this have is, not. This is, this is for, a surprise. For Matthew and I, this is fresh. So. I have brought it up to you guys before, I think, in passing, but okay. it's not something that I like, you know, harping on too much. But yeah. it is something that I'm pretty passionate about. So I'll start by saying, I mean, as a brown man, I mean, are we brown? I mean, we're Egyptian. Patrick and I are Egyptian. I don't know if we're, are we considered brown. <laughs> Because um, you know, I don't know. People say some people say we're you know Egyptian people are Arabic, yeah. a- Arab. But then some people are like some you're people not really say, Arab. Yeah, some people say you're not. You're Arab. North African or whatever because it's technically in the continent of Africa. Yeah. Besides the point. Wow, this is not where I thought yeah, we'd yeah. be starting. Matt is a, okay. a, a, a white man. Matt <laughs> <laughs> is a oppressive white man. Oh my god. Oh my lord. Anyway, so my topic has nothing to do with <laughs> what I've been you know suggesting so far. But are you being serious? It has a little bit to do with it. Okay. So my topic and. It's kind of a weird one, I'll say that. Okay. It's big noses on girls. Oh my god! <laughs> now, now I'd like to because there, we don't have video yet at this point. Yeah. I'd like the audience to know that you were looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think. So. I, here's the thing: I was looking at you, but it's because I, I've brought up the topic before, and you've kind of like questioned it in a weird, like, why? Like, okay. Anyway, okay. I like big noses on on women. I think they're attractive. <laughs> Are and you I, yeah, I do. I mean, I'm not talking like fucking, you know, Gonzo or anything, yeah. but I like a I like a prominent nose. Right. Now, are you saying that's preferred? Like you prefer a big nose? Sometimes it depends on the person's face shape and, you know, overall, yeah. you know, look, but I do like a big nose and I and I brought it up before and there's a particular actress that I'm going to bring up. Okay. Claudia Dumy, who's in The Boys season 2. She plays Claudia the Dumy. I believe she plays oh, like the Congresswoman. Front? No, she plays the Congresswoman. Oh. oh I see. <laughs> okay. Yes. Let me clear my throat real quick. <clears throat> But it's, I think she's I think she's beautiful and she has a big nose. Mm-hmm. And some people are kind of against that. And oftentimes I've actually seen people who are, you know, from Arabic backgrounds, Middle Eastern, whatever, and they have a bigger nose or they even have like a curve in their nose and they don't like it themselves. And yeah. I think it's, you know, it's because, you know, in Western culture, it's preferred to have like a straighter, smaller nose, more yeah. like, per, like, you know, Barbie-esque nose. Yeah. But I've kind of expressed in the past that I don't even like that Barbie kind of look. And so, but anyway, I think a big nose is, is attractive on certain girls. Yeah. Uh, so what are your thoughts on that? What do you think? <laughs> I, I feel like, oh I, my God. I feel like most of the time, like, because y- you, you said, uh, so I'm not, I'm confused. Can I, I get a clarifying sure. point? Like, do you prefer them? You, you've continually said that it depends like, yes, on I, certain girls. I prefer them over small noses. That's right. So you prefer them over small noses. I'd say so. Okay. So you would actively pick out a big nose <laughs> over a small nose? I'm not. Uh... I mean, if you gave me two people, and one of them had a, like a, a smaller than average nose for a woman, and then one of them had what a bigger than average? average. Average versus bigger nose. It would depend on what they look like overall. It really depends. Like there's yeah. so many. It's like a balancing act, I think. So, so you don't think that bigger noses, um, enhance looks? Is that what you think? I think generally, I don't think about it more than I like big noses on women. I just think they're it's a, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's attractive. Okay. I think I think that women who have bigger noses are more attractive. Not more attractive always, but yeah, yeah. generally I like it. And here's the thing. I saw a video on Instagram, and the reason why I thought of this topic is because on Instagram there was a video of these two sisters. And they were, I don't know, like, you know, I think they were Indian, I believe. But they had, like, slightly larger noses, and they had what you call, like, you know, the bridge of the nose. It was kind of, like, curved a little bit. Mm. I don't know what you'd call that, but just a slight curve in the nose. Yeah. And they were, like, it was like a, a surgeon video. It was kind of like a, 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 a plastic surgery video. And the after was like this, like they had like these like perfect petite slim noses, and I think it made them look not as good. It's not as like natural, not as attractive to me. I yeah. think a part of what I like, and I think a part of why I like big noses on women, is because I like the natural look. I don't like when people are like very sculpted and fucking you know yeah. f- filler here and filler there and whatever. Yeah. But I know that's a kind of rare opinion to have, and I think most people would prefer the kind of you know model esque nose. The statement of on some people, like yes. I don't think anyone could like fight that, like refute that. I mean, 
What do you think, Matt? I think that. Sorry, go ahead. I, I don't know. This is before this you. Before you answer. Before you answer, I'll say that I think that just generally, I I, enjoy, I like girls who have bigger noses. I think you can. Yeah. I think you can boil there, it yeah. boil it down to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure. I, and and. I, I'll I'll take back what I said about you know it depends here it depends it doesn't to me I just like that look yeah sure you just like that look and to bring it back to the actress that you brought up yeah I don't really find her attractive because of the nose but that's what I was gonna say like I don't like I think that plays in, into it a little bit like well it's but kind I don't of, think that's there's no way to know really I mean you'd have to like yeah because you have see to, a Photoshop picture of her with a small the only nose. way to do this is to like run an experiment and we don't have to get into that but yeah what were you gonna say what was I gonna say I don't know I mean. This, I guess, I get where you're coming from with yeah. the whole, you know. Have you ever liked a girl that has a big nose? Like yes, no, but not, not like, because not like, a, of not like it. a celebrity crush, like a girl, like actually in your life. Sure, yes, but not because of the big nose. She just nose. happened to have a big It was nose. more just like, oh, she's cute. So and she that means and, ha- and happens to have, you know, yeah. A so schnoz. that means it's it's not a deal breaker for you. I'd like to bring something up that's no. kind of like the elephant in the room. Patrick does have a big nose. <laughs> I'm not attracted to Patrick. I am not. I don't swing that way. Patrick but. himself. <laughs> Patrick himself is working with a full. But you deck. know what I've heard? I've heard that many girls, and I've heard this like it's like a trend online. Yeah. I mean, I hate. I'm not gonna say trend. People say trend for everything. That's fucking overused. Yeah. But there are many girls online who seem to like men with a bigger, more prominent nose. Yeah. Like That's a, what like, I was gonna ask. Like is... a Liam Neeson, a, a that right. type of guy. Because I personally like. To me, it's like as long as it's within reason. Bigger or smaller, I don't really give a shit. Yeah, I'm like, not, I'm, I'm, saying not talking, somebody, I'm, not, I'm not talking about like what? Like no, I'm be, saying if somebody so weird within reason. I'm saying Who's if the arbiter somebody of within reason. I'm <laughs> saying personally, if some, if like a person had a Voldemort no nose look going on, yeah. like that is just as unappealing to me as somebody with a three foot Pinocchio nose. Yeah, oh, oh, there's a line. The, there's a line. That's right. Have you guys seen the picture of the dude with the? fucking motorcycle helmet and his nose is sticking <laughs> no. no I've never seen that that's so fantastic is that, a, is that like a, a, a it's like a meme that oh, okay. like I see occasionally it's like this like really small motorcycle helmet is <laughs> massive <laughs> nose and it's like he can't close the visor <laughs> that's, that's fantastic but no but what I'm saying is like within reason smaller or bigger I'm with like, you there's a, there's a line you I don't really I don't really care yeah. but what that's what I was gonna ask is I would be curious on the opposite end to hear what like what does a woman think sure. about a dude with a bigger yeah. like a above average or below average schnoz I, like what is the opinion there what i will say and i'm not a woman so i don't know but what i'm gonna guess <laughs> Speak is for that... all women though <laughs> <laughs> oh i'd love to do that um i for think all women. i think that it's acquired taste honestly i think that some people like some girls would be like oh i like a, gr- a guy with a prominent like strong nose like a bigger nose sure. and some girls would be like oh it's too big i don't like the way it looks it looks gross to me whatever they might yeah, say yeah, yeah. but to me it's like yeah i don't know i just like there is a line I will agree with Maddie. Uh, you know, if someone has like an insanely big nose, that's not something I'm necessarily into. Yeah. I just what I'm think what I think I'm saying, and I'm and I'm figuring it out as I as I talk because I kind of thought of, about this topic later. He's telling us his kinks. Yeah. <laughs> what I, what I will say is that I prefer, you know, a nose on a woman that's slightly bigger and natural than one that's like shaped and lined and like yeah. you know art. Artificially sure. you like the natural Well, and I feel like what you're talking about now, we've specified just noses here, but I feel like this applies to just everybody. That's a perfect physically. transition. And I wrote that down actually in my, in my notes. He's is right, that I have big noses on girls, plastic surgery, and the Barbie girl aesthetic. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Where I feel like with everybody, like whether it's men looking at women or women looking at men or, you know, women, women, men, men, you know, what have you. Men, 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 men. Exactly. Two and a half men reference. Two and a half men reference. Is that what that was? Patrick's never seen it. Patrick's I've actually I know, never I've, seen it. I've so actually uncultured. seen quite a few episodes. Really? And I don't, you didn't I don't put know. Together Isn't that funny that, that I have actually never seen an episode, but I knew that. And you didn't put together that was the intro for two and a half men. Can I bring something that's completely random? No, up? no, don't bring up the, the stupid girl. I'm going to bring up the Rocky theme song. Oh, my God. Because please. Patrick, in, in the past, I think I was oh, in high school or maybe first year university, but I was telling Patrick about the Rocky song and I played it in my car. Mm. You know, the most popular... <laughs> that's right. Go ahead. Yeah. The training montage song. That's right. Yeah. I believe it's called Gonna Fly Now. And he beats up like a... Uh-oh. A ham Russian or dude? something. A ham? Oh yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's beating he's his like, ham. He's meat. beating his meat in a yeah. cold his cellar meat. or whatever. He's beating his meat. No, it's like a. 
cow just, carcass. Uh, or no, something. but I'm gonna continue because I wasn't done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go but for it. but Patrick, I played the song for him and he didn't even know it. And and this is like we're 18, 19 years old at least. No, no, so no, no. I was, we were in high school, right? Yeah, so, so we were let's say eighteen. Less than I don't 18. even know if we were in high school. But that's borderline that's, like oh the Star Wars theme. What's that? Exactly. That's that's what I said. I told him that <laughs> in my opinion, and I feel like that's it's pretty widely accepted that. The Rocky theme song is one of the most, if not the most, popular movie score or movie song of all time. Like, Gonna Fly Now? I think it's, is that what it's called? I it believe that's be. what it's called. I just always knew it as the Rocky theme. The Rocky theme song. Mm-hmm. The Rocky theme song is one of the most popular of all time. And I was flabbergasted that he didn't know it. And then I was also upset that he dared to say that it actually wasn't probably the most popular because he didn't know it personally. <laughs> anyway, that's besides the point. Anyways. Um, back to the matter at hand. Back no, to the matter at hand. No, but what I, I was saying is yeah. I feel like this, you know, what I was saying about men, women, women, men, both, whatever, you know, however you slice it. Men, men, men. Exactly. That's where we got. <laughs> I feel like it just is a, it's a general thing of like, what you're saying about with noses just applies to everybody where like there are certain physical things that every individual person will be drawn to one way or the other within reason sort of thing so i feel like what you're saying like when you brought this up were you saying this as like is this your confessional like are you trying to absolve your sins or is this just more of like a absolve my what sins like are you saying you feel like weird or whatever no. or it just feels like out of the ordinary or something I think or like I, I it's think... a point you have to like explain to be like well here's why i like a bigger nose maybe as yeah, i think because the norm like you said would be like a smaller sure. kind of nose sure i think it's just kind of like i know that it's not the most widely held view and i also think that it's an interesting topic to to bring up generally because i don't know i feel like most guys would not agree with me and so yeah. i wanted to see what you guys thought but i just right. feel like well and that's what i'm saying we're in the sense of like yeah it's like there are you know Guys who like taller women, shorter women. There are women who sure. like ripped dudes, dad bods. Like I just feel like what you're saying with the nose thing just is like a universally applicable thing to mm. how people on an individual level view people they are attracted to mm. just with different physical aspects. Whether yeah. it's somebody's face, somebody's nose, you know, is somebody fit, is somebody a little less fit, are they taller, shorter, you know, yeah. I think I'm just a, whatever. I honestly think at the end of the day I'm just a proponent of being natural and i think i mean i'm not gonna i don't i'm not trying to be like an asshole and judge people who are you know doing surgeries and shit like i that. will be an asshole if you're one of these hollywood <laughs> people and you're like you Botox. know an 80 year old man and yeah. you're trying to look like you're in your 30s again mm. and then you look like you were you know you made out with an oncoming train mm. like like you know ben, that's a that's like a ben, Sh- ben shapiro's lower lip looks like, <laughs> like someone just beat him up before he started yeah. filming the show. if but, i could if i could jump in here for a moment i want to circle back to something you said that kind of you may surprise me a little bit. Mm. You said that um, it's a trend. You, you you hesitated with the word trend, but you said that girls there's I've some heard, cult of girls out there. There's a subset of women. There's a subset of women. Cult. That, some cult. Yeah, there, Sorry, there's, that's there's a, a, a word. Yeah, yeah. yeah like how a, big though? Because like to well, I don't me, know. like to me, are you asking for yourself? Like to I'm see asking for myself. But I was working with. Listen, I was with this. Patrick's accepting resumes. I was right? with this girl one time. <laughs> right. And. We you're were just macking on your nose. <laughs> no, like we were chilling. That's an awful vision. <laughs> we were chilling, and she turned to me and she's like, "God, I love your nose." Really? Yeah. And, really? And that's and that's something that like I'm a little insecure. That's something I'm a little insecure about. But didn't that like it's... give you immediate validation? No, he, uh, that's how weird I am. It made me think, "This girl's weird." Like, why is this no, girl? Like, what? You know what I mean, like, there's, a, there's a subset. I've, I've, I'm uh, telling you, I've heard. I think there's like I've seen either social media comments about it or like even like. Um, I was listening to another podcast that's not as good as this one. You should watch this one. But it was some some podcast where they were talking about... It's like some podcast with 20 million views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like not as good as this some, shit. Something like, you know, like J- J- J-R-E. Yeah, Mark. like Joe Rogan's podcast yeah, yeah. or some shit. Yeah, some, up and, some small up and some summer. Fucking, he'll get there one day. Maybe he'll make it. Yeah. He'll make it like us. But yeah, I think that like... <laughs> Somewhere, somewhere, I've heard that there is some girls. There are girls out there who like that, and I think yeah. even you know, I think uh, I think Chris D'Elia was talking about it on his podcast. Oh, he's got a schnoz on him. He, he has a schnoz on him, yeah. and and he's talked about you know Liam Neeson's nose and how like a lot of girls that he's encountered like tell him that he has an attractive. But, nose. but he's a handsome man. Like Liam Neeson is. is a handsome dude. Well, he that's is. the thing, and, and also and, and he's oh. got a great voice, and yeah. also I mean I could just get lost in his eyes. Yeah, yeah he's right. he's one of those. People that's actually like a really good. Pit. That's yeah. actually a really good point. Like yeah. about the package. Yeah. Like what? What's the package that you're dealing with? Exactly. Are you dealing with someone who's like a fucking like you know Nosferatu looking guy, <laughs> and he has a big nose? It's not gonna help him. That's right. In fact, it'll probably make things worse. <laughs> but I think if someone is like has a mystique about them, or is like you know generally considered attractive or successful or whatever, yeah. and they have a, a bigger than average nose, then it may be like, oh, it's a, it's another interesting part of who this person is. That's right. To me, I really don't think about it deeper than I look at someone. Oh, that person's attractive, and 
maybe later I'm like, wait, that person actually has a, that woman has a bigger than average nose. After you stop finding and, her attractive. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, to me, that's never bothered me is what I'm saying. And I actually think that it looks good on, on many girls. Mm-hmm. You know what I like about Nosferatu is that that movie is like from the 30s or the 20s or some shit. Mm-hmm. Like it's really old. I've never even seen it. But I love that like Nosferatu as a character is like a touchstone for sort of our generation of people. Like everybody our gen- our age knows Nosferatu. Maybe not by name, from but SpongeBob. visually they can identify him from that fucking SpongeBob <laughs> episode Spongebob, right. where they do the hash slinging slasher yeah. and then they have that joke at the end where it's not him and then the lights are still flickering yep. and they like cut to footage from Nosferatu and it's him standing there. And don't they, I, they might like edit it or something where like he's like flipping a light switch on and off or whatever. Oh, that's scary the shit out And it's scary as shit as a yeah, kid. Crazy. But it's like, I just love how this random obscure vampire from some movie mm. that's like a hundred years old now mm. he's like this touchstone to yeah. like so many people our age because of one fucking spongebob episode yeah, man, SpongeBob. where everybody knows who he is now but what i was gonna say getting back to schnozzes yeah. is i'm in i'm surprised because i feel like i mean i'm gonna say personally i feel like i don't tease you about your schnoz patrick sometimes but i, I do. feel like Mark does. I feel like generally in our friend group, it's like, you know, we make fun of me because I'm short. I'm a tiny little manlet. I don't Can know. I, interrupt? I, don't, I don't think, think I, we've ever done that. I don't that think we've ever, ever made. I mean, we've never done that ever. I, I I'd would like think to do it. I'd different. like to do it more. I think sure. you should start. Put me in my place. <laughs> but or maybe it's how like tall other, tell the audience how tall are you? Uh, like a whopping five seven and a bit. See, that's not that's not like you know that's not alarmingly short. That's I mean, right. that's if shorter I than the average bring up a stat, the international average for female height is five five so like two oh, there you go so i'm there not trying go. to i'm not trying to make fun no, 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 of no, no, but what right i'm saying is trying to but even if it, but but even if it's not you guys i've definitely had like whether it's you know other friends of mine or whatever we're like if we're all making fun of like physical things on each other my the go-to height? for me is always like oh you're short yeah. and i feel like your go-to is typically the nose. like somebody will point out your yeah. nose but what i'm saying is when that girl said to you oh i really like your nose i can't believe that that didn't like hit for you and make you like super excited and Rock be like, hard. If I could, <laughs> sure if I that, make you guys but be like, yeah. but be like, fuck the guys for always talking about my nose. Like I don't yeah. give a shit. They can make fun of me all I, they want I, from now on. Yeah. Like I know that this girl was into it, sort of thing. The, so this, I like, actually think it's about owning it, though. I think if yeah. you're, if I think if you're, and I know you're saying you were, you've been insecure about it. Yeah. And I apologize if I've been, if I've been any part <laughs> no, of that. No, no, no. Like no, it's not that I was insecure because like you guys. Sure. Make like I, I don't like we all like. Yeah, I don't know, bust on each other, sure. but like just in general, like Pause. I don't know. <laughs> Pause. Bust. I was just, I was gonna, I was prepared to let it go. Bust. You said bust on each other, and I, I meant, was prepared I meant, to let it go. Busting. <laughs> You're talking busting, you know each balls. Balls. busting each other's balls. Break each other's balls. Yeah, there we go. Balls. Exactly. I think busting each other's balls. Busting works too, but, but it's better than stem, bust on each that's other. That's not the stem of I don't think like why I'm like insecure about it. It's just like because like genuinely, I think I've internalized I guess the ideals of I guess the society. Wow, I don't like that phrase. You know, you, you know, um, you sound like you sound like people you don't like. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. We live in a society. I know, I know. But what I was gonna say was just to make you understand, like, why you weren't like over why the moon. I weren't over why I wasn't over the moon. This girl actually turned out to be the crystal girl, which we can save that story for another time. Ah, yeah. but you so, didn't know that in the moment. I didn't know that. In the it doesn't moment. matter. So, so now you're just kind of thinking whatever she said was bullshit, no matter what. It well, was because a now, because anger. because in my mind, she's this like wacky person you know yeah. what i mean who we can talk about the story so later can't take so any I've, of her opinions seriously. i've intertwined wacky person okay this is a wacky opinion you know i don't think I, mean? I, I understand why you did that but i think you should realize that there is a, a group out there who prefers your look mm-hmm. right. and i think you should have That's some confidence comforting. in that it is i'm right. sure it is i hope i hope you take comfort there's actually that. something really important we need to i think address though oh. with regards to noses there's different dimensions like there's long noses and there's okay. like fat noses well here's the thing like you definitely like aren't into like fat noses right are you talking about wide wide like yeah width like, width like fiona from shrek y- yeah exactly not necessarily yeah i'm not necessarily human version by the way hot red. <laughs> no i'm not even kidding human version you know what I'm human fiona version the yeah. redhead the redhead hot I like a little yeah. bit of meat on my bones, so I was into the Shrek, the, the, the older green one. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. I've actually never even, you know, I actually have never seen, like, most of the Shrek movies. I think I've what? probably seen a little bit of the first one. Maybe What? Like, I don't know. I'm and not that's why really... he doesn't want to go see Puss in Boots, bro. I don't. Oh, my God. Yeah, Puss, Puss in Boots, the last wish. I want to watch so it. Good. Is We're it still going theaters? to. Uh, probably. Okay. I can bring myself going to, to watch that movie because it's genuinely fantastic. It has any... It's better than it has any right to be. But it's, I'm an, it's an animated cat with fucking boots on. Benny. But it's so good. I just I can't believe. Wow, guys, the Shrek movies for me, 
I love the Shrek. Or like such a thing as a kid. Like yeah. the first, I have always said the first one is like great. I think Shrek Two is like genuinely. I'm not like I know it's kind of a meme, but I'm not shitting. Maybe not a masterpiece, <laughs> but I think it's like genuinely like a legitimately great okay. sequel. Like, and it is like it's one of the. I think it's one of the best examples of a movie that's like a kids movie. But like funny for adults too, mm. in a different way from Pixar, where Pixar is more like it's kids movies. But like, we're gonna talk about depression, and that's why like you know, these freaking riddle and addicted Xanax dependent adults get behind it. <laughs> whereas, <laughs> whereas like, wow. I mean, hey, no disrespect, but You're a prejudiced person. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm <laughs> kidding, please. Whereas like, to me, Shrek is it's good, it's funny for kids and for adults. Mm. Like, they throw that, like, adult humor in there that's, like, funny, too. Shrek the Third, a little weaker. More like Shrek the Turd. <laughs> <Get it. laughs> I like Shrek the Third, though, just because it's kind of nostalgic for me as a kid. The one I've never seen is the fourth one. Is it the one where he has, like, 20 kids? Oh, yeah, no, no, the no, no, Forever the After one? with Rumpelstiltskin as yeah, the bad guy. That, I, one. that one I've never that seen. That one's okay. Surprisingly one's enough, okay. I think I remember the most about Shrek the Third. Maybe it was because I was, like, it's more my, it's more our time. Right. How does the first one go again? That's the one with Prince Charming. That's like, the one with, I thought that was wow. the second one. No, Shrek the Third is the one where the king dies. Yeah. And mm. then. Oh, he's a, and isn't to, he turned into a frog or some shit? Yeah. Well, in the second, the end of the second one is him turning into the frog. And then the third one is when he dies. Yeah. Great yeah. funeral scene with Live and Let Die playing. That's right. right that always Live and like Let that. Die. Exactly. So, but he dies in that one. And then the whole thing is that Shrek is going to become. Oh, and Shrek yeah, and, and Fiona are supposed to become. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The success. No, sorry. I'm an idiot. Prince Charming is in the other two because he's the bad guy. No, I no, mean, no, he's not number one. Yes, he is. Prince Charming. It's um, Farquaad for number one. But is oh yeah. Well, maybe Prince, Prince Charming. Charming might, he one. might be referenced in one, but right, him and the fairy godmother, the bad guy in two, and yes. they're the bad guy in three. Sorry, I meant uh, Arthur. Yes. King Arthur. Yes, yes. Like he's the kid they find when Shrek and Fiona are like, we don't want to rule far, far away, so we need to find like an actual successor, mm. and then they track down and oh. it's King Arthur. So that whole thing where they go to like the medieval high school and like King Arthur's like sort of like oh a Oh my nerd. god, I need to rewatch them because what you're saying it feels like it's jogging a memory. No, it feels like the oh. movies are blending together. I mean, the general like the long and short of it, the Shrek one is him and Donkey going and getting Fiona and Farquaad is involved like yes, the bag and stuff. Them. The second one is them going to far far away to meet her parents and like the fairy yes. godmother and Prince yes, Charming yes, yes, want yes. The, Charming the to run the wagon comes yes. to pick them up and they want yes. her to marry Prince Charming so that like Prince Charming exactly. can be the one running yeah. far far away and then the third one yeah is the dad dies like the king dies yeah. and then they need a successor yeah, yeah, so yeah. they go find King Arthur but then yeah the fourth one check I think it's was it Forever After yeah. with Rumpelstiltskin never seen it the only clip I know from that movie is when that kid goes to check and he goes do there are that's the only clip yeah. I know those, yeah I think those, so those movies are, are those movies are eight out of the nine skill I think Wow. Seven or eight on the nine scale. Wow. You want to describe what the nine scale is for all the viewers that don't know? So, yeah. So, the nine scale is like a three-tier system that we use where it's one to three is like a low-tier movie and you can put it like high in the low tier or low in the low tier. Such so as like, like a, a three would like be a high, th low exactly. tier. Exactly. Yeah. And then medium, four to six. That's right. And then high tier, seven, seven to nine. nine. And you can... It just gives a little bit more like a specificity. Is right. that a word? You can sure. say that, sure. Yeah, specificity to where exactly it goes in the tiering system. Right. And, then, and, then, and not only that, it also kind of like, it has the specificity aspect of it, and mm -hmm. then it also has like, generally do I think this is a low tier movie, a mid tier movie, or a high tier yeah. movie? It's so you like, can it's either... specific and it's vague. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which is good. Anyway, so I, think anyways, I, I think we should stop talking about Shrek. Anyways. Like, I don't even give a fuck. <laughs> anyways, but. Shrek, but... Um, so wait, so you don't like the wide noses? Not necessarily. I don't really. I'm not into. Not, okay. I'm not necessarily into wide noses. I think yeah. what more, more what I was thinking about is like. I think of backgrounds like you know Middle Eastern people, Arab people, Indian people, Pakistani people. Certain certain backgrounds that are known like the women and men, are known for having slightly bigger noses or something. Yeah. I always find that like, that natural look. I think it looks good on a lot of people, and I don't think you know. I've always been, not the biggest fan when people undo that, and it's like I mean whatever makes them happy. God bless, yeah. but. I don't know. I don't mind that natural look, but right. anyway. And why do uh, why did uh, why does a male celebrity in his eighties decide he's gonna you know get a nose job and why? get plastic surgery and you know why look like that? he made it with a train? Who knows? Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, Mr. Patrick, take us home. All right. So what are we talking of about? the three topics we've talked about today, it's been you know. Uh, Lighthearted in a sense. This one might be a little more um, buckle up. Uh, yeah, a little more buckle Here up to put it go. in a phrase. I I wanted to bring up 
uh, privilege as my topic mm. and specifically like I what you guys <laughs> spe- okay well what I want to know from you guys is what do you guys think is the goal of like like when media outlets like release stuff on privilege and like like what is, what exactly are they saying like there's people who have privilege and what should these people with privilege be doing and like what's the point of bringing privilege up kind of thing like what is the function of making that a term and like having it in popular culture I think that I think that a part of it is that people want to help people who don't have an equal opportunity if they mm-hmm. like if that's what the view that they have like people want to equalize things in a way yeah if someone has privilege that means that you know someone who doesn't have privilege doesn't get the same opportunities or maybe doesn't get the same yeah shot yeah at whatever they want to do so i think a part of it is like a the, there's the right intention there and the right like spirit of we want to help people who don't have this you know inherent privilege to get to where they want to be yeah yeah so to like kind of give equal footing almost so like, kind of like to equity, use your phrase like equal opportunity yeah it's like the, but it's like the equity argument too yeah. it could be that it's like where it's like you kind of people who need more help yeah they you know you give them a bigger booster seat or whatever so they can they yeah. can be on equal playing field okay or so how do you feel about how privilege is sort of conceptualized in our society today like we'll break that down what do you mean like because okay i'm i'm with you with the phrase like oh like we want to like identify the people who are less privileged who don't have the same opportunities as more fortunate people right and we want to sort of like as a society step in and make these lives better but what i'm saying is do you guys agree with how that selection process is sort of done well tell me how's it how's it done typically well based on what i've seen in media it's driven by the color of your skin like this color the color of your skin is what sort of determines where you are in the privilege sort of hierarchy sure and what i'm saying is do you think that's an effective way of identifying people who are in need kind of thing? I'll, I'll say that i think that a part of it is that it, maybe it's just because it's an easier way yeah it's kind of more of like um it, it would be really hard to break it down into all the different factors that take a take part in mm-hmm. in privilege mm-hmm. so maybe it's just kind of like the best way to do it with large numbers of people because oftentimes if you have like you know certain backgrounds of people who are historically you know in living in impoverished areas yeah. or high crime areas or whatever the fuck it is then it's just easier to be like this type of pe- these types of people usually don't have a fair shot yeah. and so we're going to help this background of person yeah. do i think it works every single like every single time and it's going to like be 100 percent effective it's like no because you're you're not considering all the nuances and stuff yeah but i'm sure at times it's like you know the best wide scale solution i think but... i think that backfires though because then it's sort of creating like a whether people are meaning to or even people think of this or not it might be creating like a stereotype almost and like it's mm-hmm. kind of making sort of for lack of a better word narrative on the like this group of people like wouldn't it be equally as easy to just break it up by socioeconomic status i think it possibly could be and wouldn't that be wouldn't that make more sense but then maybe people because people with low socioeconomic status are yeah. the ones who have trouble getting opportunities like people who are in higher but, but i think a lot of people make the point that yeah like the socioeconomic status is linked to race and like the reason why certain people are of low, low socioeconomic status historically and like from generation to generation is because of racism and because of stereo mm-hmm. because of you know discri- discrimination yeah. and stuff like and that and i think so. it's fine to like acknowledge that yeah but then like there's this idea of like like white privilege for example and you know you and i aren't white no matthew you are white so i'd like to hear your thoughts on sort of like how you feel about the label of white privilege but like if we broke it by ses socioeconomic status then we could clearly see that there are people who are white who are in like um, what's like a really poor area in in the states that's like white people like alabama i guess i don't know is that (laughs) wow Wow, just called out the state of alabama my bad (laughs) no i get what you're saying i this because i the rurals of alabama before 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 maddie says what he's got to say as someone who i mean if you want to call me brown or arabic or whatever egyptian born in egypt that's right um i've never personally felt like i've been at been at a disadvantage Mm -hmm. um like in the schooling system and all that sort of shit in canada i've never felt like i've been screwed over because of the color of my skin or i didn't i wasn't given the same shot Mm. i always felt like it was fair and not to say and and not to suggest that you know that's that's the way it is in all cases and and like 
I don't know what a lot of people go through, and I'm sure it's really difficult. But mm. for me, it's always been very fair. And but maybe, maybe it's because you know I go to a school and live in an area with that's like you know we do live it's in a suburb, and yeah. and people are like generally of equal. Not, I won't say equal, but like in the same in the same area of socioeconomic status. Maybe if I was you know extremely low SES, then it would be harder for me definitely. Yeah. But I've never personally felt like the color of my skin has gotten in the way of me doing what I want to yeah. do. We also live in one of the most multicultural places in the world. Yeah, so yeah. That's Ontario, definitely... Ontario, baby. Yeah. But yeah, Maddie, we, we've hogged the mic for too long now. Yeah, let's... I keep interrupting him. But... Yeah. Yeah, let's just pass it over to the white guy. Yeah. All right, here we go. No, I... Be the oppressor. <laughs> I think about this sort of thing somewhat frequently i mean i'm always having conversations with myself like an insane person about you know political or philosophical you know there's just things i'm constantly thinking about and talking about myself with and i don't think i've ever actually like because we talk about this from time to time not yeah. specifically this topic but things in this nature yeah. and i don't think i've ever vocalized this to you guys or anybody for that matter but you think whites are superior <laughs> no whoa no hey, hey, hey. no nah, I've please never said god this in public before but no <laughs> please god please god no don't come for me <laughs> don't do don't cancel me um when it comes to something like where you bring up white pri uh, white privilege yeah to me it's a thing of like i feel like it just gets talked about the wrong way and in a sense is somewhat useless because what i mean is like there are people who will be like no there's no such thing as white privilege like everything blah 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 blah, blah. and it's like well i mean the numbers don't you know the statistics and shit don't necessarily back that up and at the same time there are people who act like well if you're white life's a cakewalk yeah which is also bullshit obviously not the case kind yeah. of thing like it varies and depends but what's always frustrated me i guess is like and the way i've thought about it and broken it down and i guess this is me now vocalizing it for the first time is like white privilege does it exist obviously yes to what degree on the scale i mean i guess that's i think you know, it depends on where it you depends, are too. but Definitely. my thing is i sort of look at it in a slightly broader scale in the sense of like my thing with white privilege is it's not it's not universal, let's say. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is like white privilege is an idea that is a specifically like Western That's right. Idea. That's right. Whereas to me, I'm more concerned sort of with what you guys were talking about with like money and power and social standing and like those sort of privileges there's also a part of me and this is more like philosophical than it is like real world but to me that like what is a universal privilege every second you spend on the planet somebody else is no longer on the planet so it's like yeah. you know your time on this planet your health mental and physical health like right. those are universal privileges even more than like the money thing. Yeah, some people are born with shit that they can't. Because it's like you could be, you know, in a lower social economic standing, but be, you know, cancer free as opposed to the millionaire who's got like stage whatever, like terminal mm -hmm. cancer. If I, if I could butt in actually with uh, expanding on what you're just saying there. I've heard other people say this as well, like having like, uh, like a complete family that's a privilege as yes well. like, like there are things to me that like go even beyond the like wealth and power yeah. level yeah. but that's slightly more like philosophical and also doesn't necessarily relate to what we're talking to or it's I think like it's fair i think that i think that people like you like what you're kind of saying is that and correct me if i'm wrong but that it's not like we shouldn't be painting such a broad brush of like you know this is the fucking be-all, end-all. It's not just like one extreme or the other. There's like so many different little factors to consider that impact Well, it. to me, it's like, it's not so much a broad brush. It's the opposite. Where to me, it's like when people narrow it down to, and this is just the thing, mm. not even with just the white privilege thing, but this is just the thing that people, a lot of people try narrowing things down to very like identity politics focused things where it's like, it's about your race. It's about your sexual orientation. It's about your religion. It's about, like, you know, your gender identity, any of that stuff. Whereas, like, that all just feels very, not unimportant, but, like, small scale to me. Whereas, like, back to the point you were saying, Patrick, about, like, well, people bring up privilege as, like, a way of trying to help people. Sure, you'll see somebody bring up, like, white privilege as a thing of, like, 
you know, white people have, let's say, the power, influence, whatever, like, see, I, I do I, something I, with that to help. I loathe that phrase because you're saying white people have the power to do blank. Sure, okay? but what I'm saying but you're is... You're referring to people who have money, okay? Yes, and that's and what I'm saying. And not all people who have money are white. That's what I, but that's what I'm saying, where it's like, to me, it's like focusing in on something like white privilege, for example, is not large enough of a scale where to me it's like again obviously like there's like the you're alive you're in good health family friends like that but that doesn't necessarily like the longest living person on earth yeah. like that privilege doesn't apply to helping people yeah. so that's why i mean where it's more like philosophical and a little more like heady but to me yeah the big one has always been like the money and power thing because to me it's like when i say white privilege isn't universal it's because the people at the top of the food chain in China aren't white people That's right. or in like Egypt, a Middle Eastern country yeah. or in Saudi Egypt Arabia. or in an African country or a South American country, like, you know, wherever, like it's not white people. It's whatever the predominant, you know, group is there kind of thing. Yeah. But doesn't matter where you go. People at the top of the pyramid are the ones with money and the ones with political power yeah. and the ones with, you know, on and on and on kind of thing. So to me, it's like a thing of when it comes to privilege, I wish people looked at it from a less of an identity politics stance yeah. and more of a broader like, hey, and we it, should be going at the millionaires, the billionaires, the, you know, people in power and being like, hey, dickheads, you have the ability to fix things. Yeah. So you should be the ones yeah so, doing it then, regardless of your skin color or your gender or your religious affiliation yeah. like regardless of any of that shit it's like you have the money and power to do things do it and yeah. i think aside, aside from that aside from like like putting aside the, the fact of like or the idea of telling rich people like telling millionaires and billionaires like oh you guys gotta do something about this like mm -hmm. you're you have the power it's like i think people just like you said need to be viewing it in a, in a different way like through a different yeah. lens of like to me personally it seems like like money has a much more you know intense pull on things than maybe your your ethnic background i think people have to have at least a more balanced view of things because i feel like like what maddie was saying about identity politics it's like a lot of people boil it down to very small scale things yeah where but money is like a universal power you know like mm -hmm. people are like that's just i don't know that's yeah and to like build on what you're saying with like changing the view like if we can change the view to like something that's more operational in the sense of like this is the view and it can translate to a solution kind of thing. Like we can't translate, or at least I don't think we can translate, oh, like white privilege. Okay, white people go out and help people. Like I don't think that's going to do what they want it to do. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if we... How do you even prescribe that? Exactly. And if we do it more, we're focusing on like power, money, resources and stuff. And I don't think it's so much as like tell millionaires. I think it's like, and this is way harder to do said than done, yeah. way harder said than done or more, way more difficult said than done it's like we need to like breed a society of like like a an interconnected inner joint society like i feel like we live in a society that's like fragmented does that make sense like it's fragmented like if we can like raise people to like care about their communities and like and and value innovation and stuff and like still like these are like i guess capitalistic capitalism values like, if we can value that, but also value the community you come from, then people will invest back in their communities, you know what I mean? And, like, they'll care kind of thing. But, like, we live in such an individualistic world where it's, like, people are, like, in it for themselves. Like, they're growing up. I want to get rich. I want to get I don't, like, program, Yeah, right? I want fuck you money. I want whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I want to live. I want to go vacation all the time. You know what I mean? Like, Thanks, Andrew like, Tate. <laughs> but, yeah, d does that kind of make sense? What well, I'm yes. Say? I don't think there's anything wrong because, like, I'm not necessarily somebody who, like, I'm not, I'm not like anti-rich people. I'm also not pro-rich people. If I was leaning one way or the other, I guess it would be more the like anti-rich side. Wait, but what do you mean That's by that? That's weird because no, would wait, wait, you... Wait, what do you mean, but what do you yeah. mean by that? Like, Just the sense of like a lot of them, not, it feels like painting with a broad brush, but like your typical, like your Elon Musk, it's like, yeah, you're kind of a shitbag and you could be doing a lot more useful things with all this wealth than buying Twitter and like tanking it. SpaceX and like exploring the solar system to me is a much better use of that yeah. time and money. But what but I mean is like, me, it's like, isn't that a slippery slope of like, 
expecting rich people to do certain things and it's like how would you even go about like what patrick was saying with a different idea but how would you even go about like prescribing them to do certain things and like having to do certain like an extra well, well that's of... what patrick was saying where it's easier said than done where to me it's like i was just listening to a show or something not long ago where they were talking about billionaires and they brought up a similar point of like there should be more of like societal pressure and a societal norm of like you should be doing something with this money that like benefits if I could, society. If I could kind step of in, like Elon Musk has made Tesla, he's made SpaceX. Like those things benefit society. What are you saying? Like what what level do you mean though? Well, like the all point, the products that we have and all like the innovation that happens in the Western world, like that's a benefit to us, right? Yeah, sure, it and is. That's where their money is going. It is, but what I'm saying is like. Even as, like, a legacy thing or, like, when I die, like, when – if, like, a, fa a billionaire dies or whatever. But, like, the point they made on the show I was watching is, like, mm. somebody like Elon Musk could go into a city like Baltimore, let's say, in the States yeah. tomorrow and with all the money and shit they have could, like, turn that city around. Could I? Into, like – and obviously that's a hard thing. That's a whole thing. Like, yeah. there's – a human element involved of like it's not it doesn't mean like if there's like crime and stuff going on in Baltimore it doesn't mean tomorrow it's yeah. gonna like suddenly be crime free whatever. but it's like the amount of good somebody like that could do yeah. in a place like that yeah but they don't kind of thing like their point they kind of made which I somewhat sympathize with is like why isn't there more of a societal pressure of like you have the ability to still be richer than 99% of the other people like ninety, you can still be richer than ninety nine percent of the people on the entire planet, and do this wonderful thing that like that would be like a legacy thing. Like yeah. if Elon Musk went to again like a t a city like Baltimore in the states and like cleaned it up and turned it around, like for the rest of time, people would be like the man that saved. That's the guy that like you know helped pick the city up like single handedly. Practically, if I could interject on that idea, I would say like even though we have discussed money being like a really strong influence, it's not the be all end all. And what it's I would not say, a cure, but it's, it's like, and, and it's pretty close. And what I would say would be like, we have like, like in the States, there's many government programs where they raise money and they, and they pour money into like, I guess, less fortunate places. And it's not the case that those places turn around, as you would say, like it's more, I think it's a deeper it's a issue. Like a logistical issue. I would say it's more of like a like a organizational thing. Not even an organization. It's a human problem. It's a human problem. Thing. As like, like bleak as that is to say, exactly. it's a human problem. It's like it's like the the values in that community or like the like I guess the sort of like view the perceptions so you, of that community. So it's the, would it be fair yeah. to say that you're? The, I don't want to use the word value. I want to no, rescind yeah. my word values. Yeah, I want to yeah. say like the perceptions of that sure. community and like how they view life, kind of thing. So basically. Would you agree with the the idea that if this was possible, it, it would have already happened? Is what you're saying? Like if if, if someone was like yeah. if if many like there's so many rich people out there that they could have done this in the past. Like, you're, are you saying that it's not it's it's a deeper issue? So even if they were doing that, like yeah, it wouldn't do anything. Well, what I'm saying is it's a deeper issue in the sense of like yes, like I'm not saying don't fund these places. I'm not saying don't throw money and like improve infrastructure and improve like the school systems and and all these places, but like it needs to be a coordinated effort in the sense of like we need to target the humans like the human element of like why like places are like worse sure. off you can others. lead a horse to water but you know you can't make him drink that yeah, whole thing that's a that's that's, that's very well said definitely yeah. part of it and yeah. i get that but to me it's still a thing you wouldn't of like, say that's a big part of it or would you say like how like what proportion of that part would be a it's a big factor. part of the puzzle but to me it's like you're not going to get to that stage yeah. if you don't start by like Dumping the and money also, in and also and also and also like there's like another like way you could look at it is the like all the taxpayer money like why does it have to come out of like an individual why are we expecting individuals to save the world when as a society we give money to the government and we've decided that we're gonna we're gonna share in sort of how our society develops wouldn't it be a matter of like how we reallocate our funds, like what our priorities are. Sure, I don't necessarily think Because like the what, onus... United States of America spend how many billions on the military every year? Well, but that's the problem. Yeah. It's like, it should be on the government, sure. But the government, the US government, for example, is way more preoccupied 
you know, building better bombs and planes and drones yeah. and shit. Now, whether or not that's they right are, or wrong is a different story. Then they are, you know, investing in, like, a healthcare system yeah. worth a fuck. But right. that's what I'm saying where it's, like, it's not... It's not necessarily that the onus should be on, like, a select few people that are super rich. Like, in a perfect world, it would be, like, the system sort of working itself out and evolving itself. Yeah. But my attitude is, like... I don't think it's a wrong move to, like, put pressure on certain, like, rich people to be like, hey, like, that's and, and could that, do good. Like, again... And, and that ties but, into what I was trying to say about, like, the, like, we need to change, like, our societal values. Like, if we, like, as a society change in that sense, then there would be that pressure kind of thing. Yes, and, and that's what I'm that. saying, where it's like, I don't fault anybody for being, like, you know make your millions, make your billions, like, go get your money. If you're a Jeff Bezos who builds a company like Amazon that takes off and becomes this ubiquitous thing. Yeah. Like, I don't have a problem with that necessarily. But to me, it's more a question of, like, A, how much is enough? Like, when does it get to the point of, like, yeah. I think you're good kind of thing? Yeah. And B, it gets to the question of, like, I don't know, just, like, I mean, it's impossible to speak from that perspective because I am not a millionaire or a billionaire. Yeah. But it's, like, doesn't some human part of you like look at the world around you and be like red cross could really use 500 million dollars you know or the salvation army could really use or you know what i'm gonna put like homelessness being a huge thing everywhere like i'm gonna build a you know 10 story skyscraper you know in every major american city that is going to exist purely as like a homeless shelter like you don't pay it like it just there it is it's a homeless shelter yeah. kind of thing I want, I, but the problem yeah. with that is like i mean and this is a larger issue with like homelessness is the problem with homelessness is like there isn't a way for people to make money off of fixing that problem yeah. which is why nothing gets done which yeah. is like the really unfortunate reality i mean it's we're gonna we're gonna revisit this topic definitely again in the future but uh uh, because we're kind of going off a, on a tangent from privilege. Sure. But definitely I want to revisit this. Um, thank you guys for listening. This has been... <laughs> <laughs> but but can we get some love on women with bigger nose? Oh my goodness. <laughs> this has been... What's our name again? <laughs> what a roller coaster. Well, yes, thank you. We are you. so wildly adequate. Thank you for tuning in to the episode that will never be heard ever because it was a proof of concept and a pilot. But yeah. thank you... For maybe, who knows, one day listening and to the demo where, episode. And this is where your fart comes in. And this is where the fart we sound effect comes in. Thank you maybe for checking out. out. <laughs> we can put it out, right? The, the, wildly, the wildly adequate podcast. Yes. Goodbye. 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 Take Bye. care. Bye. Kisses. Bye.